On day one, I spawned in as a pretty normal guy. But wow, look at this beautiful city. This is gonna be an easy 100 days. Just then, I heard the sound of something overhead. I looked up and saw a small plane flying by. Hmm, I wonder where they're going. They're probably just checking out the beautiful views of the city. As they got further away, though, I saw them drop something from the plane, which left a string of black smoke behind it as it fell. Suddenly, there was a loud bang, and everything got really bright. It was a nuclear bomb! There was an intense ringing in my ears, and I felt like I was getting sick. Whoa, what's going on? The building beneath me started to shake, and there was a loud crash as the building started to collapse. I blacked out. When I woke up, I was laying beneath a pile of rubble. Somehow I had survived. Oh, my head, where am I? I looked around and saw some light coming through the rubble. Nearby, I saw a wooden pickaxe and picked it up. Let's see if we can get ourselves out of here. I started breaking blocks and soon found myself outside. The entire city was in ruins. Hello, is there anyone there? As I looked around, I heard a noise behind me. Something was watching me. It was a massive mutated dragon. Nice dragon, just don't come any closer. Just as I said that, the dragon took off and started flying toward me. I had to get out of there. I scrambled over the rubble as the dragon blew his fire breath. I gotta hide. Maybe I can find a safe place in this building. I ran inside the stairwell of the nearest building, leaving the dragon outside. I hadn't noticed it until now, but my hunger and thirst was really low. I needed to find some food and water. This looks like an old office building. Maybe they have a vending machine I can get some food or water from. I checked around the corner and sure enough, there was a vending machine there. I opened it up and found some canned soup and purified water. Oh, I'm so thirsty. This water is a real lifesaver. And I didn't know soup could taste this good, this is gonna be even harder than I thought. On day two, I woke up to the sound of gunshots. I snuck over to the edge of the window. What could this be about? Down below, I could see a group of wasteland raiders fighting off a horde of zombies. One of the raiders looked a little different than the others. He must be the leader. I watched as the raiders managed to fight them off. I was so distracted by what they were doing, I didn't notice one of them had snuck up behind me. Hey, put the knife down. I don't want any trouble. If you don't want any trouble, then empty your pockets. Uh, I don't have anything you'd want, just water bottles and canned soup. Why wouldn't I want that? Every water source in the city is contaminated with radioactive waste. Purified water is a luxury, one that I deserve, not you. Why are you doing this? Wouldn't it be better if we worked together? What, have you been living under a rock or something? We work for the Finkel, mob boss of this new world. And I don't know you, which means you don't work for him, which means you need to hand over anything you got. Things were getting heated. I had to get out of here, but he had me cornered. Maybe if I could push him hard enough, it'd give me enough time to escape. That's a really interesting offer, but no thanks. I gave him a shove and started sprinting for the stairs. Hey, get back here. He was starting to catch up to me when suddenly the floor gave way and the raider fell through the floor. Uh-oh, that didn't sound too good. I took a look over the edge and saw the raider lying on the floor. There was no way he survived that. I quickly ran downstairs. Well, I don't think he's going to be needing this hunter's knife anymore. Hey, who's over there? I peeked back out over the edge, and the raider leader was looking right at me. They started shooting. Get that guy. I'll find you. I ran away as fast as I could. Day two, and I was already starting to make enemies. I'm sure this isn't the last I've seen of them. On day three, I kept on running until I found a building to stop and catch my breath in. Okay, okay, so the city was hit by a nuclear bomb, the water sources are contaminated, and there are gangs of raiders roaming the streets. Not to mention the hordes of zombies and flying dragons. I think my best bet is to get out of the city. I ran back out onto the highway and started making my way out of town. I don't know how to deal with the mutated creatures, but maybe I could talk some sense into this mob boss guy. What was his name? The Finkel? Before I could do that though, I had to survive the day. As I was making my way across the desert, I soon found a farm. Check this place out. I wonder if anyone is home. As I got closer, I saw someone coming toward me, but it wasn't a friendly face, it was a zombie. Come and get it, mush brains. I was able to land a few good hits. Fighting zombies feels wrong, but I know it's the only way I'll survive. After the first zombie was down, I quickly started fighting another one. Sorry about your friend, but I'm not gonna be on the menu today. The knife I had picked up was proving useful, and I was able to land some good hits and survive another day. That was too close. Maybe I can set up a base in the barn. I headed to the barn, only to find more zombies. They reached out mindlessly as I struck them down with my knife. I wonder if these people used to live here. How many zombies are there? I really hope I don't get infected. I kept fighting my way through the horde, and at long last was able to clear them all out. With the zombies cleared, I headed into the loft to see if I could set up a makeshift camp. Oi, you up there. I looked down from the loft and could see a farmer looking up at me. Are you the one that cleared out those zombies? You may well have just saved my life. Why don't you come on down here? I headed down. His voice was friendly, but I could tell he was a little tense. We'll bring you around these parts. We don't get too many folks around here. I was in the city and got attacked by some wandering raiders. I kept running until I came across this farm. He seemed to relax a bit after I said that. 
Yeah, those raiders are causing some serious problems for us. They kill anything or anyone that gets in their way. All for some boss no one has seen. The Finkel, yeah, I, I heard them mention something about him. Yeah, he's trying to gather all the resources to hold power over all the other survivors. Speaking of, I'm sure you could use something to eat. He tossed some water and bread over to me, and I quickly scarfed it down. Thank you, I really needed that. No problem. Say, why don't you stick around here for a while? I'll get a bed set up for you in the house. My name is John, by the way. John led me over and into his farmhouse. On days four to five, John and I got to work building me my own section of the farmhouse. It was nice to have a friendly face around. I was hoping that we could work together to locate the Finkel and put a stop to this madness. With the exterior complete, we then filled the inside with some of the basic essentials I would need. Thanks, John. I think I'm going to be really happy here. After a bit, I met John outside to ask him about fighting off the raiders. Apart from my knife, I didn't have any way to protect myself. If you're going to survive out here, you need to have the gear to sustain you. There isn't much around, but I can help you get the little we have. Hang on a second. John headed inside and then returned a few moments later. Here, take my axe. Go on and cut down some of them there trees and bring the wood back on over. I grabbed the axe and headed over to the trees. I got to work cutting them down. While I worked, I couldn't stop replaying what had happened with those wasteland raiders in my head. Did he really find me all the way out here? I finished cutting down the wood and headed back over to John. John tossed some of the wood back to me and instructed me on how to build a crafting table. He then showed me how to make a stone axe using some of the cobblestone I had collected earlier. Nice work. There's another thing I want to show you. Head on over to the barn and look in some of the barrels. There should be some leather in there you can use for our next project. I set off in the direction of the barn to get the leather. I couldn't believe how lucky I was to have found a friend. John was like an older brother to me, and I couldn't wait to see what else he would be able to teach me. Okay, I got all the leather I could find. What are we doing with it? I started laying out all the leather as John explained. Now, this isn't the strongest armor, but it will keep you safe if you find yourself in a tight spot. You can use these skills to make armor out of all kinds of materials. You'll be happy to have it in case those raiders show up. With the armor all done, I quickly equipped it. I feel safer already. On day six to eight, I woke up early to go gather some more supplies. We were hoping the Finkel would be willing to work something out, but just in case, we would need to be prepared. Soon, I saw a small settlement in the distance. When I got closer, I was immediately attacked by zombies. Ugh, you guys reek. I don't even feel bad about this. There was a pretty big horde here, and the zombies were relentless. Where do you guys keep coming from? After a while, I managed to cut my way through using my knife. I headed into the first building and found some iron and flints inside. Awesome! As I headed back outside, another group of zombies attacked. Oh geez, not more of you. These zombies were quicker than most, but I was able to hold them off. As I fought my way toward the next structure, I could see a couple of zombies were stuck in the windows. Yeah, you guys aren't very smart, are you? I knocked down the rest of the horde and made easy work of the dum-dums stuck in the window. I checked the chest and managed to find some more iron and some more leather. One of the chests even had a blade inside. Hmm, I wonder what I can do with this. I then checked behind the counter and found a medicine cabinet with a first aid kit inside. Nice, hopefully I'll never need it, but this is good to have in your pocket. I then checked out the storage room and got my hands on some copper wire and a battery. A nearby box had some rubber inside of it too. I made my way out of the building and headed into the last structure. This building had a kitchen and in the chest there was some water and more canned soup. Now really isn't the time to be a picky eater, that's for sure. Suddenly there was a banging sound in the storage closet behind me. Oh no, maybe someone is trapped inside. I quickly opened the door just to find more zombies. Why did I think there would be anything else in here? The zombies caught me by surprise, but I was able to clear them all out. Once inside, I managed to scrounge up some more batteries and bandages. This seems like plenty of supplies. I bet John can show me all kinds of cool things to make with this. With my pockets full, I headed back to the farm. As I returned to the base though, something seemed off. Suddenly, the whole place started to explode. Oh no, John! Just then I saw who had caused all of the destruction. It was the raiders from before. We told you we'd find you. You're gonna pay for what you did to our friend. You don't understand. It was an accident and he attacked me. Where's John? It's an eye for an eye out here, bucko. The only person you need to worry about is yourself. What did you do with him? In my rage, I started charging at the raiders, completely forgetting that they had guns. As I charged, I took a couple of bullets, but my armor protected me from taking too much damage. Take this! I managed to get one hit on them, but the shots had been too much, and they quickly knocked me out. Oh, my head. Where's John? I was starting to black out when I heard a voice in the distance. Run! Everyone run! An old woman came tearing into the camp. The Skylarker is coming. Skylarker? She must be talking about that mutant dragon. Leave him, boys. Let's get out of here. The raiders took off running, but I couldn't move. As I was blacking out, I could see the face of the woman standing above me. On day nine, I woke up in a small hut with the old woman nearby. She was stitching up my wounds. What happened? How did we escape the Skylarker? A smile flashed across the woman's face. There was no Skylarker. I just did that to save your skin. My name is Maggie. 
Wow, thank you, Maggie. I don't think I could have gotten out of there without you. Where's John? The smile faded from her face. I'm not sure. I saw some of the goons taken behind the barn. It's probably best not to think about it too much. I can't help but feel like it's all my fault. They never would have found him if they weren't after me. Like I said, you'll be better off not living in the past and focusing on the future. I could tell she had some secrets of her own, but I didn't want to pry. So what happened here anyway? I remember seeing a bomb go off, and when I woke up, the entire world was different. I must have been out for some time. The world was already in a state of chaos when the bomb dropped, but as you can imagine, the bomb changed everything. Finkel Fredrickson, or the Finkel as they now call him, quickly rose to power, commanding the vigilantes by promising them power and control of their own. I've seen him only once. He's half man, half machine. They say he's holed up in a safe house, hoarding resources, but no one can reach him. He lives on the far side of the uncrossable desert. So if you think you're going to defeat him, you've got quite the task ahead of you. I took a second to think about everything she had told me. Well, I did survive a nuclear blast. Defying the impossible isn't exactly a new concept for me. I could see a twinkle in her eye as she gave me a grin. Then I guess we better get to work. On days 10 to 11, I was feeling better and decided I should head out on my own. Thanks for all your help, Maggie. I'm glad to know there's still good people around. It was my pleasure, Zozo, but don't feel like you have to leave. You're welcome to stay here if you'd like. I would love that, but after what happened with John, I couldn't risk putting you in danger. Well, if that's the case, take my horse and head down the road. There are some abandoned structures that you might be able to use. I headed outside and hopped on Maggie's horse. Maggie had quite the setup out here. If the Finkel ever came for her, he'd be in for a heck of a fight. Off in the distance, I could see a large structure. It looked like a gas station. As I rode up, I saw some zombies wandering around. More of these guys, no surprise there. I charged up on the horse and attacked the first zombie. That's easy enough. After I downed the first guy, I turned and saw there were more, so I ditched the horse to fight them on foot. It would just be embarrassing if I got Maggie's horse killed. Let's go, you brainless trash heap. I landed a critical hit and took out the first guy, and then quickly took a couple swings to take out the other. These guys are so easy. Uh-oh. There was a huge horde coming right at me. Man, do you guys ever get tired? Get away from me. The horde chased me around as I tried to fight them off one by one. I kept hacking and slashing and finally took out all the guys outside. Whew, that was a lot of work. I hear more inside. Let's do this. I made my way inside of the gas station, fighting off zombies along the way. While I was fighting, I noticed there were some vending machines in here. This was also a huge space. If I could take these guys all out, it'll make a great base. I fought my way into the next room and fended off a final attack from the remaining zombies. At long last, they were all defeated. Finally, now let's see if we can fix this place up. It'll make a great base. My first order of business was to head outside and cut down one of the massive trees outside. I was going to need its wood if I was going to patch up all the holes in this place. Once I had gotten the wood I needed, I started by filling out the entrance to the base with doors and planks of wood. Man, check out that roof. It's not going to work if I have all those holes in it. Anyone could drop in. I then got to work using planks of wood to fill in all the holes. It took a lot of time, but I couldn't risk a zombie, or worse, a raider getting the jump on me. With the roof filled in, I got to work on cleaning up the mess inside. I cleared out piles of rocks and patched up the holes in the wall. Next, I ran around the base and made sure to light it up. This place is looking great. Now let's see if there's anything in these vending machines. I took a look and was excited to see they were full of chips and water. I tossed some water to the horse and helped myself to a snack. What luck. Soon enough, I'll be able to track the Finkel down and hopefully make some positive changes in this world. On days 12 to 15, I made my way back to Maggie's house to return her horse. When I arrived, she was sitting in a chair outside her house. Good morning, Maggie. I found a great place for a base. Thanks for pointing me in that direction. I'm always happy to help, Zozo. In fact, I have another tip for you. There was an old weapons facility down the road. Word is that there's been some zombie activity, but there ought to be some good loot. If you have any hope of confronting Finkel and his raiders, your best bet is to scavenge for better gear. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the tip. I'll go see what I can find. I jogged down the path in the direction of the warehouse. I saw the terrain start to change. I must be getting close. But up ahead, I saw a group of zombies. These guys must be the zombie activity Maggie mentioned. I wonder if they picked anything up. I charged into battle and started fighting against the horde. That's when I noticed one of them was holding something unique. Hey, that guy has a machete. I could use that. This hunter's knife just isn't going to cut it much longer. <laughs> I kept fighting and even took a few hits. It's a good thing I had this armor. It was keeping them from breaking the skin and getting me infected. All right, let's check out this machete. I picked the machete up from where it had been dropped by the zombie. This thing must have been brand new when he picked it up. On days 16 to 19, I could see the warehouse just up ahead. As I got a little closer though, I could see another horde of zombies blocking my way. But these guys were all dressed the same. Time to introduce you to my little friend. The machete, I'm talking about the machete. As I started to fight, I was close enough to see that these guys were all wearing hazmat suits. There must have been some kind of serious accident that caused them to all get infected, even while wearing their suits. If I could get my hands on my own hazmat suit, I could navigate all kinds of toxic environments. Hey guys, I've got a joke for you. What do you call a row of zombies? A deadline. With my killer human, 
humor and fighting skills, I managed to take the last guy down. I kept pushing forward and made my way into the warehouse. As soon as I stepped inside, though, I heard a terrifying sound coming from the ceiling. What is that? To my horror, there was some kind of mutated bear hanging from the ceiling, and it was looking right at me. There were some crates on the far side of the building. Maybe they would have some hazmat suits inside. Easy there, buddy. No need to panic. I inched my way forward, but it was no use. The mutant bear crawled right above my head and dropped down onto the floor. Oh, why does everything keep hitting me in the head? This mutant bear was no slouch, and he did some major damage. He even broke my helmet. Oh, if I keep taking hits and losing armor, I'm not going to survive this one. The bear used his massive claws and swiped at me again and again. Thankfully, I was able to use the new machete to my advantage and take him down. These mutated monsters are brutal. That was way too close. At least it wasn't a Skylurker, though. Just then, there was the sound of thunder and some clouds rolled in. Then, the rain started to fall. Oh, rainfall. Maybe I can catch some water in a water bottle. I stepped out into the rain, but immediately started to get hurt. It was acid rain. Ah, it burns. That reminded me. Maybe there was a hazmat suit in here. I headed over to the stack of crates I had seen earlier. Oh, perfect. There's a hazmat helmet in here. I dug through the other crates and found the rest of the suit. I put it on and saw it was also lined with armor, which gave me even more protection than before. Let's go test it out. I ran outside, and nothing happened. The suit worked perfectly. I even went and splashed around in an acid puddle with no problems at all. Looks like we're good to go. Let's get out of here. On days 20 to 22, I was making my way back from the warehouse when I came across a camp in the wilderness. I snuck up to the edge of an overlook to get a better look. It's the Wasteland Raiders from before. I don't see their leader with them, though. This was going to be my best chance to get the jump on them, so I snuck down the ridge and around the backside of their camp. Using some nearby sand, I put down a couple blocks to climb over the top of their base. Okay, it looks like there's just a couple guys down here. I think I can sneak up on both of them. I hopped down and quickly took the first guy out with my machete. It made a little bit of noise, but the other Raiders didn't seem to notice. Looks like you're up next. I snuck up to the other Raider and managed to beat him down before he could sound the alarm, too. After he vanished, I noticed he had dropped a couple of things. A shotgun? I can use this. This. And what's that? Orders. I opened up the book and saw it contained orders from the boss. That must be the Finkel. Looks like he's trying to expand his operation. I'm going to have to try harder to get to him sooner. With the shotgun in my inventory, I then snuck up to the corner and peeked around at the guys by the fire. This is for John! I blasted the first guy before taking out my machete to finish him off. You guys won't hurt anyone else again! I swung my machete and took the second guy out as well. With the camp cleared, I now had the freedom to scavenge the place for supplies. I went digging through the chest and managed to get some more shotgun shells, iron, and even found a stock attachment, which I added to my shotgun. It looks like I've got everything I can get from here, but I know there's more of them out here. I've got to take them down, and soon! On day 23, I was making my way across the desert when I saw something strange lodged in the land ahead. Whoa, is that what I think it is? As I got closer, I could see it was a giant sub. Submarine, that is. I'm not sure how this got here, but it's crazy to see a big sub all the way out here. Very cool label on the side, though. Looks like a bell. Sub and ring the bell? If that means something to you, I say do it. On days 24 to 29, I arrived back at the base and saw it had filled up with zombies again. Oh, brother, I thought I'd gotten rid of all of these guys. I pulled out my shotgun and got to work. The zombies didn't stand a chance against my new weapon. One by one, I mowed them down. This time, you won't get back up. I made my way through my base, picking them off. I couldn't do this over and over again, though. I wouldn't have the ammo for that. I decided this base was going to need some serious improvements if I was going to survive the dangers ahead. Once the final zombie was eliminated, I decided to get to work digging out a bunker under my base. A nuke had hit once before. There's no reason one couldn't happen again. Imagine if the Finkel had a nuke. How would anyone feel safe? I managed to clear out a large space under my base, but I'd have to come back to this later. Next, I got to work on putting up a wall using all the cobblestone I had collected from digging my bunker. As I was making my way across the base, I came across the abandoned cars outside the gas station. Hmm, this reminds me of something John had shown me. I should take a closer look at these vans. I ran inside the station and grabbed a car jack as well as some tools and brought them back outside. I moved the van onto the jack and took a closer look. The engine block is actually in great condition. I might be able to use this to get the van inside up and running. I headed inside the shop and installed the engine into the van. I also put on some wheels I had found laying around the station. I hopped inside the van. Well, I still need to find the key and get some fuel, but once I have those, I'll be able to get around the wasteland quickly. Excited about my new find, I went back outside and kept working on the wall. I wound out to the edge of the station then started wrapping back to where I had started. I was almost done when I heard a shout from up the hill. Help! Help! Hey, mister, help! I looked up and saw a group of desert zombies chasing a little boy down the hill. Hang on, kiddo, I've got you! I didn't have my gun on me, so I rushed in with my machete in hand. Whoa, these guys are fast! I took a few hits, and these guys were doing some real damage. Why don't you guys pick on someone your own size? I kept swinging and managed to take the horde out. Hey, kid, are you all right? I am now, thanks, sir. But my family is still back at the outpost. The zombie came out of nowhere, and I don't know if anyone else survived. We don't have a moment to lose. I can help. Show me to your outpost. The little boy went running back up the hill. Hopefully, we can get there in time. 
On days 30 to 35, the little boy and I sprinted back toward his family's outpost. As we got closer, it didn't look good. The whole base was on fire and completely overrun by zombies. I'm not liking the look of this kid, but I'll see what I can do. Stay here. I charged toward the base as the zombies attacked. Your sleepwalking days are over, pal. As I cut through the first layer of zombies, I noticed the little boy had followed me. What are you doing? This is too dangerous for you. My family is here. I can't stay back and hide. Okay, just stay behind me and we'll keep making our way through. I cut down the last group outside the settlement and noticed one of the zombies had dropped a gun. Check it out. It's an AK-47. Let's lock and load. I ran ahead, unloading the clip into several of the zombies. This thing could pack a punch, but the ammo was limited. I soon ran out and had to switch to my machete. Keep going, mister. We can get through. As I fought ahead, I couldn't help but notice that this kid was small, but brave. I could respect that. Eventually, we had fought our way into the main street of the settlement and started checking the buildings for survivors. I'm sorry, buddy. It doesn't look like there's anyone here. I'll keep looking. I fought off more zombies as I moved to the other buildings, but building after building was checked with no survivors. I managed to finish off the last zombie and then met back up with the kid. I'm sorry, but it looks like everyone was wiped out by the zombies. We probably need to hurry and get out of here though. More of them could show up at any time. The boy nodded and we started making our way out. Just before we had left the settlement though, we heard some crying in the distance. Help! Help! Is there anyone there? I think that's my sister. The little guy took off running in the direction of the cries. Moments later, he came running back with a small girl in tow. My sister was hiding in a box. Thanks for coming to help us, sir. I'm happy to help, guys. Why don't you two come and stay at my base? They agreed, and as we started to leave, I noticed there was a workbench nearby. This will allow me to make more weapons and ammo, so I quickly scooped it up and we headed out. On days 36 to 40, I arrived back at the base with the kids. I brought them inside the station and told them to help themselves to some water and food. You guys get comfortable. I'll get to work on building you a place to stay. I got to work removing the shelving units, then put down some wood planks to build a platform. Once the platform was in place, I went ahead and set up some beds and other furnishings for the kids and myself. Here's a place for you guys. I know it's new, but I hope you can be happy here. Everything was looking good, and I decided to go ahead and start working on a workspace area. I had been collecting a bunch of materials, but until now, didn't have a space to use them. Soon, the workspace was complete. I was out of ammo and my weapons could use some improvements, so I set my shotgun on the workbench and worked on giving it some upgrades. Once that was finished, I did the same thing with the AK-47. With that upgraded, I then used some iron, gold, and gunpowder to fashion some bullets. I also set my machete down and fashioned an electric-powered machete that would help me hit twice as hard. I'd like to see the Finkel try and mess with me now. Then I went outside and got started on a new project. I was feeling bad about everything that had happened to the kids, but I had an idea for something that might cheer them up. Soon, I had completed building them their very own playground. Check it out, guys. I made this for you. Wow. Wow, Zoldo, thank you so much. We love it. While the kids played on their new toys, I tried tilling the ground and planting some seeds. I was happy to take care of these kids, but scavenging for food wasn't going to cut it. We needed a renewable resource. After a while, though, the soil rejected the seeds. This isn't working. I think I have another idea, though. I made my way back into the bunker and got to work digging out an indoor garden. The soil was no good for growing wheat, but maybe a mushroom farm could survive. After a while, the mushroom garden was complete. And since we would have a new food source, it only made sense for us to have a place to eat the food. I worked putting together together a wing of the bunker for all of us to store the food we grew and of course eat it. Soon the kitchen was finished. Phew, that was a lot of building. This base is going to carry us all the way to the end. On days 41 to 43, I decided to scout out a nearby town for more supplies. I also wanted to test out the new upgraded weapons. As I approached the zombies, I whipped out my electric machete and put it to work. Whoa, this thing slices through these guys in one hit. My new weapon was incredible, but I couldn't get too excited as I could hear a terrifying groan off in the distance. Where is that noise coming from? fought my way through the zombies and saw a massive mutated zombie standing outside an old shop. That's when I could hear some cries for help coming from inside. Oh dear, get away from me! Help! Help! Oh no, someone is trapped inside! Hang on, I'll help you! I ran forward with my upgraded AK in hand, ready to fight. The zombie saw me and started walking towards me. One of the other zombies was in his way, so the big zombie laid down and crushed it to death. Whoa, this guy isn't messing around. He took a couple more steps toward me, then let out a blood curdling roar, causing me to take damage. Ah, oh, my ears! I opened fire and started working on draining his health. That made him mad. In anger, he picked up a block of sand and threw it at me. I barely got out of the way. Eat lead, you beast! I kept shooting at him and noticed that every time he let out one of his shrieks, new zombies would rise up from the ground. I wanted to focus on taking him down, but I kept having to fight off the new zombies. He kept throwing blocks at me and managed to hit me with one, causing temporary blindness. Whoa, what's this? I can't see. I fired blindly, and when my vision returned, a zombie was only a few steps away. Whoa, get back. How was I going to beat this guy? It felt like an endless stream of zombies, and I couldn't get a hit on him. 
My health was draining quick too. That's when I had an idea. Hey Mushbrains, follow me. The little zombies were a lot faster, so I managed to lead them away from the big guy, causing them to group up. Now that I was out of the big zombies range, I was able to start picking off the little guys one by one. No wonder you guys want my brain. Yours are worthless. Eventually, I was able to take them out and focus on the big guy again. Anytime new zombies popped up, I quickly took them out so I could focus my attention on the monster. At long last, he fell and disappeared. Phew, that was a close one. Now, who was calling for help? I headed inside the store and looked around. Hiding behind the counter was a guy dressed in trader clothes. My good sir, you were marvelous. Oh, uh, no problem. I'm just glad you're okay. After that brilliant display of fighting, how could I not be? Please, take this incredible item as a token of my gratitude. The trader threw out a sombrero? Oh, uh, thanks. This is really, really nice. You are most welcome, sir. You have no idea how many people would kill just for that. But hey, just because we're good friends, I'm willing to give you something even better. A priceless weapon for a price. I wasn't feeling super confident in this guy, but if he had a really powerful weapon, it could help. All right, sure. What's the price? I have a permanent shop not far from here full of supplies, but a certain monster has taken residence there. If you could take care of it for me, I'll happily give you this weapon. Sure, I can do that. How dangerous of a monster are we talking? Based on what you just fought, it should be no problem for an accomplished warrior such as yourself. If you say so, I'll be back soon. On days 44 to 49, I arrived outside the shop the trader was talking about. This place looks abandoned. It doesn't look like anyone has been here anytime recently, but I guess I better take a look inside. I headed inside and saw more of the same. The shelves were all empty and there didn't seem to be anything here. I checked a few of the boxes and managed to scrounge up a few bullets. Well, I'm not seeing anything. The monster must have left. I guess I'll head back and tell the trader the good news. Just then, I heard a terrible noise coming from the window and the stream of fire came tearing through. Oh no, it's the Skylurker. I started to run as the Skylurker came first through the window, chasing after me. I jumped through the other window and tried to escape. Let's see how you like this. I returned fire using the bullets I had just picked up from my AK-47. I could tell it was doing damage, but he was doing damage right back. The fire breath was really starting to hurt. My health is dropping. I better get some cover. I quickly scarfed down some food to try to regenerate my health. The dragon continued to shoot fire, but I managed to start getting my health back. You can't run from me. The dragon took off into the sky as I kept shooting. I was starting to believe I could actually win this. The dragon finally landed, and after a few more shots, I landed the final Final shot. Whoa, that guy is powerful. I hope he's the only one of his kind. I headed back into the store to finish seeing if there's anything else I could use. I soon saw that there was a container of fuel on one of the shelves. Oh wow, this is just what I need to get the van going. I checked some nearby boxes and also found a full set of heavy military gear. I equipped all of the new armor. Check it out, my armor is completely filled up. I really wish I could have found this before I fought the Skylurker. It didn't look like there was anything else in the store, so I headed out to go tell the trader the good news. I couldn't wait to see what powerful item he was gonna reward me with. From days 50 to 53, I made my way back to the trader. As I re-entered the town, I slashed my way through another horde of zombies. Out of the way, dopey. After cutting through all of the zombies, I entered back into the shop and saw the trader had nodded off in his chair. Hey, buddy, I'm back. The trader slowly stirred and nearly fell out of his chair when he saw me. You survived? I mean, you survived, just like I thought you would. I am definitely happy to see that you survived, just like I thought you were going to survive. I did. The Skylark was strong, but I managed to take it down. I'm here to collect the powerful item you promised. Me. Ah, yes, the powerful item. Yes, I should have that. Let's see. The trader walked over to a chest and began rummaging through it. Uh, hmm, hmm, yes, that, that should be good enough. The trader whipped around, holding a massive rocket launcher. How's this for a powerful item? Whoa, that looks awesome. I'm going to be able to take down tons of enemies with that. Ah, uh, yes, maybe aim for taking down just one of those tons of enemies. This is quite simply the greatest and most powerful weapon ever made. So powerful that it can't survive more than a single shot, so use it wisely and preferably not anywhere near me. He tossed it over and I saw it was called a Comet Fall. What a cool name. I'll have to save it for someone particularly powerful. On days 54 to 57, I was heading back to my base when I heard a strange but terrifying noise up ahead. What was that? It sounded like a Skylurker, but different. I kept running ahead when I saw something crawl over the top of the building up ahead of me. I stopped dead in my tracks. Is that, is that a zombified Skylurker? Sure enough, the Skylurker I had killed was just ahead of me, but had been turned into a zombie. It took off from the building and landed right in front of me. Okay, I know we had our misunderstandings. The Skylurker let out a loud roar. I couldn't take any chances this time. I'm sorry, but you made me do this. I pulled out the Comet Fall. If there was ever a time I needed some major firepower, it was now. Time for your trip to the underworld, for good this time. I pulled the trigger, the rocket fired, and nothing. The weapon was a complete dud. 
What the heck? The dragon let out another roar and started spraying me with his undead dragon breath. He was even stronger than before. Who does that traitor think he is? He's gonna get me killed. I managed to get some shots off, but it was no use. My only hope was to run away. The dragon chased me for a bit and my health was getting super low, but luckily I was able to get away without dying. On days 58 to 62, I finally arrived back at my base. The very first thing I did was start working on a bedroom down in the bunker. With the zombified Skylurker running around, I felt like anything above ground wasn't going to be safe. As I was finishing up the room though, I heard a squeaky sound behind me. Ah, where did all these cockroaches come from? I must have hit a nest or something because the whole bunker was filled with disgusting cockroaches. I killed a few of them, but had to get out of there. That was so gross. How am I going to clear the base out? We can't live in a place like that. Just then I had a brilliant idea. It was going to be the perfect solution to the pest problem. To get started, I headed over to the edge of our base where a rattlesnake had been hanging around. Don't mind me, sir. I just need your tail. I quickly chopped up the rattlesnake and grabbed the rattle from its tail. I then ran over to the crafting table and used some wood to fashion together a maraca. But before I could enact my brilliant plan, the little girl from before ran up to me. Zozo, my brother told me you'd run into a traveling trader. I actually know who he is. He had come by our encampment before. Oh, really? Let me guess. He tried to make a quick buck by selling everyone a bunch of junk. That's right, but it's actually worse than that. He works for those wasteland raiders who have been giving you trouble. He rips innocent people off and gives their stuff to the raiders in exchange for protection. But I know where you can find him. I knew there was something wrong with that guy. He's just as much a part of the problem as those raiders. I'm gonna have to teach him a lesson. On days 63 to 66, I made plans to go and find the trader at the raider base, but first I needed to take care of some things at my base, especially the cockroach problem. Alright, hopefully this works. I started shaking the maraca, and several of the cockroaches came running up to me. They were really into my music. Hey man, nice rhythm. Mind if we take a turn? I'm glad you like it and I'm happy to share, but you guys need to know you can't stay here. It's a health hazard. No worries, my guy. We'll be on our way in a bit. I tossed the maraca over to one of the cockroaches, and they really got into it. A simple infestation had turned into a party real quick. Even I couldn't help but take the sombrero I'd gotten from the trader and get in on the fun. Thanks for letting us crash your pad. Take this as a thanks. I know you humans like this kind of thing. The cockroach threw down the key to the van. Oh, perfect. I've been looking for this. Thank you. A little while later, the cockroaches had all cleared out, so I decided to try and get the van up and running. I took the fuel I had gathered and topped off the tank, then hopped into the driver's seat and turned the key. The engine sprang to life. It's working. It's working. Just then, the little boy came running into the room. Oh, we got it running. Let's open the door and go for a spin. Oh, the door. I completely forgot about the door. We don't have any power, so I don't know how to get the car out. I detect the power station up the hill? I think that's where the gas station gets its power from. Great idea. I quickly ran up the hill toward the power station. As I approached, some zombified guards came running out at me. Time to power down, boys. I quickly cut my way through the hordes of zombies and made my way inside. There were a few more inside, but I was able to take them out as well. Hmm. It looks like the power switch is off. Let's see what happens when I flip this. I flipped the switch and heard the machine start up. Some electricity started crackling as well. Okay, I think it's working, but let me go check this sign outside to see if the power is leaving the station. Once outside, I flipped the on switch for the billboard, and after a bit, it turned on. All right, it looks like it's working. Let's head back to the base. Back at the base, I hit the garage door switch, which opened the door right away. I hopped in the van, started it up, and drove on out into the wasteland. Time to show that traitor who's boss. On day 67 to 70, I made my way to the raider's main base. According to the kids, the traitor liked to hang out here. As I rolled up to their base, I saw the base was guarded by a large heavy door. Well, I gotta get in there somehow. Time to go in, guns blazing. I revved the van engine and charged at the door, pushing it open. Looks like playtime's over, boys. I leapt out of the van as some of the nearby raiders converged to my location. There were a lot of them, but they were no match for my upgraded armor and guns. Take me to your leader. I ran across the courtyard and ran into another squadron of raiders. Using the dome as a shield, I ran around the outside, picking them off one at a time. Yeah, you guys aren't very smart, are you? Soon I had made my way around and started working through the base. I was doing well so far, but where was the traitor? It was starting to feel like just an endless stream of raiders. And just as I was starting to think I had the upper hand, there was suddenly a huge explosion. Whoa, where did that come from? One of the raiders had a grenade launcher, and he was letting me have it. I quickly ran for cover and made my way around the back of a building. I snuck around and managed to pick him off, causing him to drop the grenade launcher. I think I'll take this for myself, thanks. Now I was feeling really powered up. I moved to the next section of the base and started lighting them up. I launched grenades, used my AK, and blasted them with my shotgun. I was a one-man wrecking crew, and no one was going to stop me. On day 71 to 74, I was still fighting my way through the base when I noticed a familiar face on top of a boat. It was the trader. I've got another present for you. The trader threw something at me. It was a grenade. The grenade exploded in my face, but it was just a smoke grenade. 
Man, this guy didn't even have good weapons for himself. What a joke. Using the smoke as cover, I quickly moved to the other side of the area, launching some grenades as I went. You fooled me for the last time. I launched a grenade up at the trader. It hit him, but not hard enough. I had to get up there. I popped out of my spot and managed to pick off the remaining raiders. Now there was nothing between me and the trader. Don't you even think about running. I clambered up the back of the boat and climbed up by the trader. You feeling lucky, punk? The trader shook his head and quickly put his gun away. Okay, okay, ha ha ha, you've got me. Please, I didn't mean for it to all end up like this. Please, take everything I've got. You can have it all. The trader started dumping everything he had in his pockets. This guy had a ton of junk. You think I want your trash? Drop everything. He then threw out some emeralds, amongst other valuable items. That's everything, I promise. Is it really? The trader paused, then threw out a few more items. Okay, okay, for real, that's all. Please, take a look, take a look. I stepped forward to take a closer look, but the raider managed to slip behind me and run off the boat. Oh, dang it. Well, whatever, he's not very tough anyway. I took a closer look at everything he had dropped. As I suspected, it was mostly a bunch of junk. Most of it, that is. What's this? An antidote vessel. Greatly reduces the duration of negative effects. Hey, this will actually help me. I dropped the antidote into my belt. All right, now we've just got to find the raider leader and get him to show us to the Finkel. On day 75 to 78, I kept exploring the base and finally found myself standing face to face with the raider leader. Hey, remember me? <laughs> what do you think, you're some kind of hero now? This wasteland doesn't have to be a horrible place to live. Help me reach the Finkel and let's stop this madness. Who said this was a horrible place to live? I actually quite like how things are. Then I guess I'm gonna have to remove you myself. I'd like to see you try. The raider leader pulled out a flask and drank down a potion. Suddenly, he grew into a bigger and stronger version of himself. Then he whipped out a minigun. Come and get it, small fry. The leader jumped down and started raining bullets from his minigun. I didn't see this coming at all. I had to get undercover. Why are you running? I thought you wanted to talk. I returned fire with my AK as I ran away, but I wasn't sure how much damage it was actually doing to him. It didn't seem to slow him down a bit. Looks like it's time to switch strategies. I pulled out some grenades and let him have it. I ducked for cover as I heard the explosion. Did I get him? I took a second to refill my health and thirst, then he popped around the corner. You can't kill me that easy. I kept running as he fired at me. I tried my shotgun as well as more grenades, but nothing seemed to slow him down. At one point, he got me down to one heart. All I could do was lean against the wall. Oh, he's too strong. Is that cowering I hear? You tried and you failed. You aren't the first and you certainly won't be the last. The leader jumped around the corner to finish me off, but I managed to barely slip around the other corner. Oh, that's enough running. This ends now. The leader charged around the corner. I had nowhere to run, but suddenly, an explosion. You keep your filthy hands off my boy. Maggie came running into the courtyard, peppering the leader with a barrage of bullets. This woman again? Who do you think you are? I hurried and ran for cover as I heard Maggie exchange fire with the leader. I scarfed down some food and water so I could get back into the fight as quick as possible. My health was soon restored and I ran back toward the fight. Then I heard the unmistakable click of an empty cartridge. As I looked over the edge, I saw the leader had Maggie cornered. Looks like you're out of bullets, you old hag. Any last words? Zozo, it's up to you now. Maggie charged at the leader, but he took her down. Maggie! Ha 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 ha! First John, and now Maggie? This ends now! In a rage, I jumped down from the building and hit him with my machete. I was hitting him so hard, he didn't even have a chance to shoot his gun. I threw down a smoke grenade to hide my tracks. Oh, where are you? The leader stumbled around in the smoke, and then I charged at him again. It was time to end this. You're done! I struck the final oh. blow, and the leader vanished. As he disappeared, I noticed he dropped his minigun. I picked it up. It was my turn to run this wasteland. On day 79 to 84, I took a moment to reflect on Maggie and all she had done for me. I had laid a flower where she passed. Maggie was one of the bravest people I've ever met, and if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have survived nearly as long as I have. I owe it to her to find the Finkel and save this wasteland. You have my word. I had one last moment of silence, then left to search more of the base. There had to be a book or map somewhere here that could help me. As I checked the chest, I found what I was looking for. Map to boss. This should tell me how to cross the desert and get to the Finkel. Elated, I headed back to the van. I had also picked up some more gas and off-road tires, so I was going to have a way to get there quickly. Just one more stop at my base to prepare, and I should be able to end this for good. On days 85 to 89, I arrived back at the base. As I pulled up, the little boy ran out and opened the garage for me. It was good to see him again. There was no time to spare, so I got right to work upgrading my weapons. First off was my grenade launcher, which I was able to improve using a block of iron. I also improved the minigun, so I could have an even higher rate of fire. The Finkel isn't gonna know what hit him. With the weapons upgraded, I then moved on to the car. Using the wrench, I took off the wheels and replaced them with the off-road wheels I had found. This thing is turning into a real tactical vehicle now. The next step was finishing up my base. If anything happened to me out there, I had to make sure the kids would have a safe and secure place to live. The first step was making sure it was properly lit. I went into each room of the base, as well 
LEDs around the grounds and set up a lighting system. Now I can light the whole base up with just the flick of a switch. Before I could head into my bunker, there was one more major project for the exterior. Maggie had been an inspiration to me and she always helped me when I was in need. I built her a statue so that people for generations could be inspired by her bravery. With the statue complete, I headed to the bunker and built a blast door. Then I hurried and finished up the rest of the inside. The bunker was soon complete, including a proper armory and construction room. It was time to upgrade my armor. I grabbed all the supplies I needed and got to work upgrading my armor. Using many of the materials I had scavenged, I was able to increase the durability of my armor. With the armor improved, it was time to go. I took my new armor off the armor stand and headed out. From days 90 to 94, I made my way across the uncrossable desert. The winds were blowing hard and every now and then there would be a huge dust cloud that would blow by, making it hard to see where you were going. I can see why they call this an uncrossable desert. If I didn't have this map, I'd be lost for sure. I kept pressing forward, narrowly missing large trenches at times. There were even pools of lava I could have easily fallen into. After I had been traveling for a bit, I saw an oasis in the distance. Oh, perfect. I feel like I'm about to pass out from heat stroke and all this tactical gear. Unfortunately, a fixed van didn't come with a fixed air conditioner. I pulled up to the oasis and pulled off my helmet for a quick dip. Ooh, yeah, I needed this. I don't think I have too much further to go, though. I was relaxing when I started to hear a strange noise. I jumped out of the water and pulled out my gun. What is that? It sounds like digging. The sound continued until all of a sudden, a sandworm erupted out of the ground and attacked me. Oh, whoa! I tried to shoot at the worm, but it had gone back underground. A moment later, it leaped out again. Oh, I could barely hit this thing, and it looked like it was getting bigger. The sandworm kept leaping in and out of the sand as I managed to get shots in here and there. All right, that's enough. I took out my minigun, and as the worm left out, I unloaded, taking it down. Yeah, I'm not risking that again. I'm getting out of here. On days 95 to 97, I continued across the desert in the van and finally saw the tower come into view. It was a massive dilapidated tower, but at the very top, I could see trees. Trees, this has to be the place. How else could someone have trees except by hoarding resources? It was butt kicking time. I charged into the main floor as a group of raiders started to attack me. Where's Finkel? The raiders were relentless, throwing themselves into my path but they were no match for my firepower. I made my way to the elevator. I'm sure the Finkel was hiding on the top floor. As I approached the elevator though, I could see it was broken. Oh man, looks like I'm gonna have to take the stairs. Good thing I've been doing my cardio. I ran into the stairwell and made my way up the long and winding column. After what felt like an endless amount of stairs, I popped out onto an office floor. A group of raiders were waiting and ambushed me. It's going to take more than that to beat me. It was a good thing I had taken time to upgrade my weapons and armor. I was taking a lot of hits, but nothing too bad so far. As I cleared out a room of raiders, I noticed one of them drop something. Whoa, check it out! It's a rocket launcher! I was feeling absolutely stacked now. On day 98, I took a second to catch my breath before rushing to the final battle. It had been almost 100 days since I had a view like this, so I went and took a peek out the window. This world has been destroyed, but there's still hope out there. As long as there are good people supporting your cause, it's your duty to reward them with what they want. Time to finish this. On day 99, I finally reached the top of the tower and saw someone sitting in a chair overlooking the desert. Finkel, it's over. Your raiders are dead and you have nowhere else to go. You've lost. The Finkel chuckled. Zozo, is it? Ah, oh, sit. There's no need for any more violence. Haven't you been through enough? He was just an old man. How was everyone so afraid of him? Maybe I could reason with him. I sat. Look, there's a lot of good people out there. Surely there's a way we can all work together instead of for our mutual destruction. The Finkel paused for a moment. Do you want to know how I got this car? I used to believe like you did too. I believed people could work together. We lived in a world full of natural resources, enough for everyone to live happy lives. But was everyone happy? No! People were left in the streets to fight for every scrap of food. So that's why I did it. That's why I dropped the ball. I couldn't believe it. Finkel was behind the destruction of this whole world. Why would you do that? There were other options. And look at yourself. You're no better than the people you set out to destroy. You're right, Zozo. Because this is the only way things can be. So why shouldn't I be at the top? Why shouldn't I get what I want? You've lost your mind. So let me show you how I got this car. Let me show you the price I've paid for power. The Finkel clicked a button on his arm and he started to shake. A burst of light and smoke appeared around him and he transformed into a huge mutated cyborg. I'm sorry you traveled so far to die. I'm going to crush you like a bug. No one can stop me, not even you. The Finkel charged at me and I had no choice but to run. This guy is crazy, I've got to get out of here. As he chased me, he broke through the walls. I tried shooting him, but it looked like it had little effect on his metallic cyborg skin. All I could do was run away. I might be running out of floors here. I'm gonna have to make a final stand. On day 100, I reached a large open room as the Finkel came storming up the stairs behind me. I was trapped. 
It's time to accept your fate, Zozo. I have the resources. I have the power. I have your friend. My friend? The Finkel let out a hollow uh, mechanical uh, uh, laugh. Uh, John, is it? He's here. My prisoner. He keeps the farms operational. But who cares? You'll never see him again. The Finkel let out a shriek and punched the ground, causing a group of zombies to rise up and attack. But I wasn't worried. I knew how to deal with this. I quickly took aim and picked off the zombies. I couldn't have anything distracting me from my main target. Is that all you've got? I'll show you what I've got. The Finkel charged, trying to crush me with his metallic body. I took out my minigun and let it rip. It looked like if I could hit his human parts, I was actually doing a bit of damage. You're not as powerful as you think you are. He angrily hit the ground, trying to strike me with shockwaves. He managed to get some hits in, but I was holding my own. As we passed by the windows, I had an idea. Hey Stinkle, bet you can't get me. He chased me close to the window and I managed to loop back on him. I took out my rocket launcher and took aim. Your reign of terror is over. Have a nice flight. The rocket exploded near him, launching him backwards out of the window. As he fell, my thoughts turned to John. Was he really here? I had to look for him. As I looked over the edge, I saw the Finkel had survived the fall, but he was clearly very injured. You think you could kill a machine? I will never be stopped. Never. Just then, a familiar roar echoed, and the zombie Skylurker came sweeping in. No, not a Skylurker. The Skylurker opened its mouth and started melting the Finkel with its dragon breath. After a few moments, he was gone, oh. and the Skylurker flew away. I quickly turned and headed up the stairs. I had to find John. As I reached the forest on top of the tower, I looked around frantically. At long last, I saw him. John! Zozo, is that really you? We greeted each other as old friends. Come on, buddy, let's grab this fresh water and take it to the people. With this, we can rebuild the world. We loaded the water up in a trailer and drove off into the desert, back toward the base. The world was a little bit safer, but this was a nuclear wasteland. Who knows what trouble could come knocking next.